refurbishing a vintage model steamboat part 5, propeller shaft modification and making the condenser oil trap. First the propeller shaft modification. I need to fit a flexible coupling like this from the engine to the propeller shaft. But this block is in the way and I cannot move the engine any further forward. But the good news is, when I look at the block, the phosphor bronze bearing, which is also a thrust bearing, only comes to about here when I'm showing with the needle file. So I can happily just machine away half of the block. And then all I have to do is slightly shorten the existing shaft, refit the bearing block and everything will be fine. Having a look at this, I was originally going to do a major modification. I was going to fit a brass tube like this, with phosphor bronze bearings in each end, permanently fix the tube in place with copious amounts of milli putty poxy putty. And moving the camera over to the milling machine, you can now see the milling operation. I'm removing approximately 50% of this steel block. If you look as it goes past, you can see there's no bearing in there. The bearing part is only on the first half of this block, so removing this is no big deal. It's not supporting anything, it's just there for rigidity. Originally, there was a quite small and quite blocked up oil hole to the bearing. I'm removing this and if you look carefully you'll see as the milling cutter goes past it, yes there it is, that will be removed and I'm going to re-drill the bearing and fit a proper oil cup. The milling cutter I was using on this job was a little bit too small and it did not have the length to go right to the bottom of the work. So what I did once I got the piece of metal to the size I wanted it to be, I just removed the bottom part. In hindsight, I should have used a larger milling cutter, but this was in the machine, and it was easier to just leave it there. I must once again apologise for using a drill chuck in my milling machine, but this is a special old drill chuck that is really stiff, and it's a Jacob's chuck, as you can see. And here's a finished component, complete with its little oil cup. These oil cups are from a company called 21st Century Steam, and they generally sell on eBay. And some of the stuff is pretty good. These are really nice, and they're plated, they're not just brass, I think they're gold plated. Which is a little bit over the top, but at least they don't tarnish. I'm using a small tin of Humbrol enamel for this, and it's perfectly adequate. I will give it a couple of coats, though, because it's low down in the boat, and it's therefore going to be prone to rust. Originally there were quite a few coats of paint on this part, and I think I will duplicate that. When this coat's dry, I'll give it a quick rub down and another coat of paint. I've temporarily fitted the oil cup very loosely, to allow me to handle the painted component without getting black paint all over my fingers. By tomorrow the paint should be dry, ready for a rub down and another coat. When you watch this video, or most of my videos for that matter, it may look like I really know what I'm doing and sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. I'm not really sure where I'm going to put the condenser yet, I have a couple of options. If I put it on the centre line that's best, if I put it on one side, that would be a very convenient location, but as the condenser fills up with condensate, it gets heavier, and the boat would list to starboard. The centre line is the best position, I think. The first thing to do is to make the condenser oil trap itself. So I've put a piece of brass tube in the larger of my two bandsaws. Quite a few years ago we had an old brass bed, it wasn't an antique, it was a terrible thing, and it got a bit wonky, so I chopped it up, and I used the brass that I got off the bed for all sorts of things. So now I have a length of brass tube and a big lump of brass that I'm going to make the end caps from. The end caps are not going to be too thick, but they need to be thick enough to be threaded to take some unions. First of all I silver soldered one of the end caps that I made to the barrel. And I did this in such a way that there isn't any mess on the outside of the barrel as you can see here. If you're watching this and you're not very mechanically minded, this is an explanation of what I'm doing. I'm sorry that it looks like CAD drawing for five-year-olds without the aid of a computer, but it does the trick and it's quick. As you can see, I've soldered one of the end caps in place already, and I have one in my left hand, which is very shortly going to be silver soldered in as well. But I need to make a bush for the top first. I didn't bother videoing the making of the bushes, it's a very simple job. On my sketch now you can see how it works. The exhaust comes in here, and this is the steam inside the condenser. And it starts to condense a little bit, but not too much. Most of it goes up the chimney and out into the atmosphere. The purpose of a condenser oil trap is to keep the oil inside the condenser oil trap, because the oil does not go up to the chimney. The surplus oil ends up floating on top of the water in the condenser. 
After a while the condenser will fill up with water and will need frequent emptying, generally at the time when the boiler is ready for refilling with the hand pump. So I'm going to fit a pipe union at the lowest point to allow the condensate to be drained into a suitable container for safe disposal. In this clip you can clearly see the condensate fitting in place, but I'm going to remove this because the whole thing is going to go into my acid pickle bath. Here once again is my acid pickle bath, and here is the part going into it. Just before the close of this episode, I would like to say I would never make a pressure vessel using a brass barrel. This is not a pressure vessel, it's just a through condenser. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.